Well, thanks for tuning into this video, which I believe could be one of the most significant ones I've posted since early last year. I want to share with you today about what I believe is the next global pandemic and the reasons why I believe this. And it's an important uh, message I want to give to you. So please, please like, share, comment and subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this. I'm going to delve straight in now into uh, the information that I want to present to you. On Friday the 18th of October 2019, the John Hopkins Centre for Health Security in partnership with the World Economic Forum and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation hosted Event 201, a high-level simulation exercise for pandemic preparedness and response in New York, USA. Now, six months later, six months later, on March the 11th, 2020, the World Wide Health Organization declared the novel coronavirus outbreak a global pandemic, just six months later. So it goes without saying that when a new global pandemic is warned about by the World Economic Forum again, it's not something we can ignore. On June the 1st, 2021, an article was published by the WEF titled What the COVID-19 Pandemic Teaches Us About Cyber Security and How to Prepare for the Inevitable Global Cyber Attack. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. And I'm going to read what uh, the article says to you. I'm going to pick out some um, key highlights and passages and phrases and share it with you because I believe that we need to prepare for the next pandemic and not be um, taken by surprise because God always tells his people in advance of what is coming. He never does things by surprise. He always warns those who are listening with ears to hear. And I believe that we can have ears to hear what's going on right now. And the reason I say that we need to prepare for the end of this year is because there were six months between the event 201 um, that warned about a potential coronavirus pandemic and it actually happening and becoming a reality. And on June the 1st, this article was written by the WEF. It was shared, it was published online. And if we count six months, that takes us to December 2021. What's significant as well is last year, I posted a video and I, I described how um, I had a dream. And in that dream, um, Bill Gates approached me and he wrote three sets of numbers in front of me. And the last of those numbers was 16. Now I counted 16 months from the date of the dream and it landed on December 2021. So I knew that that was significant. A little while later, I was watching an interview by Bill Gates, um, talking to um, the person interviewing him, and he said that in response to the, the pandemic and the virus, he and those who are monitoring the situation are looking at particular dates. And he actually touched on the dates that I saw in the dream, ending with December 2021, which I had seen. So what I'm saying is be prepared. Don't be unaware. Take note of things that you hear, see, dream, um, see in the spirit when you're praying and see on, um, on, on interviews and different things like that. P put the pieces of the puzzle together and you might see the picture that is emerging. So what does the WEF have to tell us about the coming inevitable, and that's the key word, inevitable cyber attack? It says this, COVID-19 shows that the world is at great risk of disruption by pandemics, cyber attacks, and environmental tipping points. There's three things there that we need to take note of that, that are, that are going to happen, guys. These are going to happen. And it's not just the, the government or the, the, the global elites that are saying this. This is in the Bible. Pandemics, 
cyber attacks or warfare, whatever it is, whether it's digital or real warfare, and environmental tipping points, world uh, natural disasters such as um, earthquakes, volcanoes, and different things like that. These are going to happen, okay? <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. These things are going to happen because the Bible says that the, the, the earth is going to endure birth pangs, birth pangs and birth pains and contractions, just like a woman who goes into labor. She has contractions and they, they start off slow and they build and they build and they build until the, the woman gives birth to the baby and the baby is born. And I tell you what the baby is right now. It's the, the creation of a new world, a new world created by God. It's the, the birth of Jesus Christ returning to this earth and taking control of this world. And we are seeing the contractions right now. And they're going to increase and intensify in the coming days, months and years. So don't be surprised. Don't be fearful. Just see it as a sign that Jesus is coming back soon. But the next one that we're warned about by the WEF, and it's in the Bible as well, guys, is the cyber attack, this digital warfare, which would probably lead to a financial collapse. And it says we should prepare for COVID-like global cyber pandemics that will spread faster and further than any biological virus with an equal or greater economic impact. There it is. There's the warning that this economic collapse is coming. It would be comforting to think that this is merely a blip interrupting a, an essentially stable state of affairs and that the world will return to normal once medicine and science have tamed the virus. Comforting and wrong. There we go. It's, <laughs> we're not going back to normal, guys, according to this. COVID-19 is not the only risk with the ability to quickly and exponentially disrupt the way we live the crisis shows that the world is far from far more prone to disturbance by pandemic cyber attacks or environmental tipping points than history indicates. If you read the book of Revelation, guys, it talks about uh, what's coming, what's going to happen and the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And they are famine. They are um, viruses and disease and uh, pestilence. They are warfare of different kinds and um uh, just a general um, uh, uh, decrease in the population because of mass deaths for whatever reason. We've got to be aware of this, guys. I'm praying and believing that, that the church is raptured before this all takes place in, in full, before the, the seven-year tribulation period when the Antichrist is revealed. It goes on to say, our new normal isn't COVID-19 itself. It's COVID-like incidents. And, and to me, that's like a hydra, you know, a many-headed monster. It's not just COVID-19. It's all these COVID-like incidents happening at once. And a cyber pandemic is probably as inevitable as a future disease pandemic. The time to start thinking about the response is, as always, yesterday. To start that process, it's important to examine the lessons of the COVID-19 pandemic and use them to prepare for a glo future global cyber attack. And it gives three lessons and I'll, I'll just quickly go through them now with you. Lesson number one, a cyber attack with characteristics similar to the coronavirus would spread faster and further than any biological virus. So basically, when this thing kicks in, when this um, digital breakdown kicks in, it's going to be faster and it's going to spread quicker than uh, COVID-19 did. OK, and it says most likely it would attack all devices running a single common operating system or application. It goes on to say a popular social networking application with, say, two billion users. Facebook. Hello. Um, that's what I put. Facebook. A virus with a reproductive rate of 20 may take five days to infect over one billion devices. Now, there's some kind of technical kind of phraseology in there, but basically the same that that. Take Facebook, for instance, I'm not saying it, I'm saying that, but take Facebook with 2.8 billion users. Um, within five days, it could affect um, 1 billion devices if everyone's connected to that. So 
it, it's going to spread quickly and fast. Lesson number two, the economic impact of a, world sp a widespread digital shutdown would be of the same magnitude or greater than what we're currently seeing. It says if cyber, cyber COVID mirrored the patholo uh, pathology of the novel coronavirus, 30% of infected systems would be asymptomatic asymptomatic and spread the virus while half would continue functioning with performance severely degraded. The digital equivalent of being in bed for a week. Meanwhile, 15% would be wiped with total data loss requiring a complete system reinstall. Finally, 5% would be bricked, rendering the device itself inoperable. You know, if you've got a 600 pound phone and you were affected, if you're one of that 5%, your phone's just gone, you know, you might as well throw it away. It's, it's as good as a, a concrete brick. The end result, millions of devices will be taken offline in a matter of days. Guys, I'm trying to warn you here, okay? There is a coming digital meltdown, okay? And it's gonna affect the economy of the world, majorly. We've got to be prepared for this. We've got to anticipate this now. Please share this message with as many people as you can. I'm not saying that it's definitely going to happen by the end of this year, but it could, but it's certainly coming. It's certainly inevitable. This is going to happen, okay? But we can be prepared. We can be ready. The only way to stop the exponential propagation of cyber COVID would be to fully disconnect all vulnerable devices from one another and the internet to avoid infection. Can you come off the internet for a while and not use it? I think a lot of people would have a panic attack over that. The whole world would experience cyber lockdown until a digital vaccine was developed. All business communication and data transfers would be blocked. So basically, you can't just go onto your bank and pay someone or uh, make some kind of transaction. You can't go to your PayPal account and withdraw some money because it would be blocked because of this. Social contact would be reduced to people contactable by in-person visits, copper landline, snail mail, or shortwave radio. Have you got some shortwave radios in your house? Maybe the time is now to stock up on them. A single day without the internet would cost the world more than 50 billion. A 21 day global cyber lockdown would cost over $1 trillion. I don't believe that this economic collapse or certainly the digital um, outage would last as long as COVID has. That's my personal thinking, but I think the effects of this would be far more reaching and keep going on. Um, effect and obviously everything because it's going to affect banking it's going to affect um, you know transactions in shops services hospital appointments shopping trading everything that's um, done digitally um, that's done with your phone that's done with computers that's done on a system is going to be affected so we've got to start thinking how can I live my life without the internet, without my phone, without um, reliance on the digital world. We've got to start thinking now. And then it says lesson number three, recovery from the widespread destruction of digital systems would be extremely challenging. It says replacing 5%, just 5% of the world's connected devices would require around 71 million new devices. That's quite interesting. That's a lot of devices. It would be impossible for manufacturers to rapidly scale up production to meet demand, particularly if manufacturing and logistics systems were affected, which they will be. For systems that survive, there would be a significant bottleneck in patching and reinstallation. So again, this, this outage could be solved quite quickly, but the, the, um, the aftermath, the effects of it would, would go on longer. And it says the geographic concentration of electronics manufacturing would create other challenges. In 2018, China produced 90% of mobile phones. I never knew that. That's a lot of mobile phones. 90% of computers and 70% of televisions. So the likelihood is your phone and TV has come from China um, that you have right now. 
finger pointing about the source and motive of the cyber attack as well as competition to be first in line for supplies would inevitably lead to geopolitical tensions. So again, we're going to see uh, geopolitical wrangling and tension and conflict as a result of this, just as we've seen with COVID-19 and we're seeing right now where China's uh, being accused of having started this and they're looking into it and you know there's tit for tat and there's this this debate and this um this um conversation going on right now in anticipating such an event the wef says different things it, it gives four points i'm not going to go through them the the more for uh, addressing businesses and corporation corporations but it's interesting that it says number four, just as COVID-19 has pushed individuals and organizations to look to digital substitutes for physical interactions like Zoom, government and business leaders should think about the inverse. Digital rollback and continuity plans are essential to ensuring organizations can continue to operate in the event of a sudden loss of digital tools and networks. And it gives an example of what something that happened in 2017. It says a necessary part of the digital transformation is having sensitive and important information stored and accessible in physical printed form. So on the one hand, COVID has forced us all to think digitally and to, to go online more than ever before. But when this this global pandemic of um, of a, a digital breakdown takes place, it's actually going to create and, and cause us to go back the other way where we're thinking about um, living and operating without um, without the internet, without a digital um, function. And it says perhaps the most important lesson, COVID-19 was a known and anticipated risk. So too is the digital equivalent. Let's be better prepared for that one. And there ends the article. Do you know what, guys? This is what's really interesting. Seven days after that article was published, you may have seen in the news, you may not have, but there was a, a major global outage at um, an internet provider. Um, uh, it was a, um, a, a company that, that handles major, major websites and companies online. And th there was a bug and it affected them and it caused multiple top uh, websites to go down, including Amazon, who they reckon lost 32 million uh, in like less than 50 minutes to go down because of this one bug that was caused by one customer. Um, and, and they were off for like 50 minutes. It's quite interesting because uh, the shares of that company fastly uh, who, who, who they are, actually went up 12%, uh, I believe it was, on that day because they, they turned it around quite quickly. And people and investors realized how much influence and um, how many people that they actually served that they realized this is a company worth investing in. Um, so that's a little tip for investors and, um, you know, um, speculators out there. But what am I saying now? I'm saying, guys, <laughs> this is coming. It's on its way. We've seen a little warning sign uh, just recently, but it's, it's, it's on its way. It's on its way, guys. We can't avoid it, but we can go through it. And I want to give you four points how we can prepare. And the, the first three points are spiritual ones, guys, because we are spiritual people. We are Christians. I hope you're a Christian watching this. And if you're not, my first point is get right with God. There is going to be worse uh, disasters and pandemics than this coming in the years to come. Believe me, the book of Revelation uh, warns us what's coming. And if you read it and you, you kind of see, see what's going to take place, it is scary. OK, if you're not in God, that is if you're not in a relationship with Jesus Christ. I gave my life to Jesus Christ at the age of five and I've had a, a relationship, a friendship with him ever since then. And I know that I know that my eternal destination is not here in this world. It's not all that I can see around me, but it's in heaven. It's in another place. 
beyond this life. There is an eternity to gain, guys. So number one, get right with God if you haven't already. And if you've backslidden and gone away and you've gone into the world, you've got hurt um, and you've got bitter with God and with life, listen, don't blame God. Blame the devil and come back to God. Allow him to heal you. Allow him to put his loving arms around you again and say, son, daughter, I've missed you. <laughs> and I want you back in my house. I want you back in my family. I want you back in my kingdom forever. Number two, start confessing God's word. The Bible says man doesn't live by bread alone. And I do believe that the, the economy and food supply chains are going to be affected by what's coming. And we do need to, uh, to think about that. But we don't live by bread alone. If it was just by bread alone, we'd be in trouble. But we live, the Bible says, by every word that comes from the mouth of God. You know, when I was a younger Christian, when I was trying to go on for God, I wrote pages of declarations over my life about how I wanted to live and what I wanted to see. Because the Bible says that we are filled with the fruit of our lips. So whatever we're saying is going to reap a harvest. If you're speaking negative, um, depressing and despondent words over your life and over your situation, guess what you're going to reap? <laughs> that kind of atmosphere and that kind of harvest. But if you're speaking words of faith, if you're saying I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, if you're saying nothing's impossible with God, if you're saying that I can speak to this mountain and see it um, uprooted and thrown into the sea, whatever it is, a mountain of sickness, a mountain of unemployment, a mountain of depression, you will see that. You've got to rise up in faith now, guys, and start speaking God's word over your life. Get a notebook out and write down what you want to see. Write down the opposite of what the world's saying, what you feel is going on. What you're fearing, write the opposite, because God's word is true. It's a lamp unto our feet and a, a light to our path. Take, take scriptures like Psalm 37, 19. In times of famine, I will have plenty. Don't believe that even though there's a disaster coming, that we have to be like the rest of the world and suffer. But even in times of, of disaster, even in times of lack, that we can come into abundance. Amen. Psalm 34, 10 says the lions may grow weak and hungry. The lions are powerful. The, 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 the kings of the jungle. <laughs> even, you know, powerful people may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord will lack no good thing. And Philippians 4.19 from the New Testament. My God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. What does it say? All your needs. Some of your needs? No. All of your needs. I'm believing that God is going to meet all my needs. I'm believing he's going to meet all your needs as you put your trust in him. In these times, in these earth-shaking end time um, times, <laughs> That we are in and and guys as i say they're only going to increase the intensity of the contractions now are only going to increase but we can see great things in the shake and we can see a revival we can see an awakening of god's spirit among his people and even among the nations and number three we've got to start walking in the supernatural guys and this was something that uh, when we were chatting about this that my parents brought out that we need to start living in a in, a, in, a, in an atmosphere, in a, in a state in which we don't rely on earthly help. Now, I'm not saying you don't go to a hospital if you're sick. I'm not saying that you, you can't go to the government for financial help. You can and you should. But what I'm saying is there's a power, there's a, a supply source that's even greater than this world can offer. And it's God and it's his kingdom and it's his resources through Jesus Christ and the power of his Holy Spirit. And you can go there today and you can get healing, you can get provision, you can get peace of mind, you can get purpose, you can get peace that the world cannot give you because you're walking in supernatural power. We need to start walking in it, guys. I believe that we're going to have to start walking in this for others as well. Uh, you know, we've seen the, the, the virus um, take people out. But, you know, if something great is coming, we need to, to literally be raising the dead and, and casting out demons left, right and center in times to come. We have power over all the power of the enemy. Remember that. 
power over all the power of the enemy. And number four, finally, and this is a practical point, <laughs> it would be good to start thinking about how we can store up for bad times. Um, in the good times, the Bible says, consider the ant. <laughs> it stores up in summer, during the harvest, during times of plenty, for, for times of, of scarcity, for winter. And it says, be like the ant, store up in the good times so that you're prepared for the bad times. And I believe it's not, um, you know, not a bad thing to start thinking about how we can live without reliance on digital um, technology. You know, if we didn't have our, our banking app on our phone or on a computer, if we didn't, if we couldn't use our credit cards or debit cards, how can we still, um, how can we still trade? How can we still purchase items? How can we still travel? How can we uh, read the Bible, for instance? Guys, if you haven't got a hard copy of the Bible, go and get one now, okay? <laughs> go and buy one off Amazon because you're gonna need it at some point. And, um, you know, get books, get Christian books and, and even CDs. I know it sounds a bit kind of going backwards, but it's about being prepared. And obviously, you know, store up food and essentials as you see fit, as you're led by the Spirit. Don't go to extremes, but, but, but be wise, guys. You know, um, get some extra food that can last you a year or two, some, some essentials that would see you through. Uh, a period where you cannot get to the shops um, like you've been able to already. And I'm, I'm, I know some countries, you know, they're not like the West, so maybe some third world countries already live like this, you know, they already think like this, but in the West, we're, we're quite accustomed to, to, to just being able to, to go and purchase things at a moment's notice. And guys, those times could be changing. Um, I'm not saying it's gonna stay like that, but we could be going through a period where there is um, a breakdown of, of the economy, of access to the internet and what we've been used to up till now. But guys, above all, don't fear, but put your trust in God and look to Him. And I hope this has helped you, I hope this has blessed you. And if it has, uh, please share it with someone else and um, you know, Jesus said, in this world, we'll have tribulation. It's going to come. It's inevitable. As the WE have said, this, this, this economic meltdown, this digital collapse is inevitable, the cyber attack. But Jesus said, take heart because I have overcome the world. Jesus has won. <laughs> and you and I are on the winning side today as we put our trust in him. Bless you guys. And I'll speak to you soon.